Hello everyone. Today I will be talking about how to create the project in Code Warrior, and also I will tell you how the Code Warrior gives you a new project. And I'm gonna explain a couple of the stuff that, as a beginner, you wanna know how to do in your uh, Code Warrior program. So first thing, you're gonna open your Code Warrior program. If you don't have it installed on your laptop or PC, or if you're in school and you need how to download and install it on your uh, PC or laptop, uh, I actually post a video of how you can actually install this program on your laptop. And I post it on my page so you can go there and look at it. And actually, it's just going to take around seven minutes to uh, do it. That's pretty easy. And I hope you can find that there. Uh, if you don't have this short card here, uh, you can go to your start bottom here and type IDE or code warrior and it's going to bring it for you. So once it's open, you're going to hit create new project. And then here is going to ask you what type of microprocessor you actually have and it's on your uh, program. So. Uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to choose the one you actually have? The one I'm using and we actually use in the school, uh, that was this one. And I keep wanting to do, use the same thing that I'm actually familiar with, uh, which is uh, not different from the other ones. But uh, the thing that is going to change, for example, these come in with a specific specification for them. For example, they have they have different accumulators or they, they are 8-bit or 16-bit or 32-bits that you want to make sure you have the right one. So you're going to click this one. And here is going to ask you what type of connection you have to this microprocessor. So if you don't have the actual board, uh, you could just gonna hit the full chip simulation. This uh, is what it actually does is that uh, it's gonna give you a simulation of the whole coding and you can actually debug it and see what it actually went wrong. It's not perfect, but it's actually helpful if you are not, if you don't have any access to actual uh, boarding and you wanna actually learn how to code. Uh, and if, if you actually have the, the board, you're gonna hit this, uh, uh, bottom here, but since we just, I don't have it at home, so I'm just going to do this one. And then you're going to hit next. Then here is going to ask you what type of program you're going to uh, use. Since we working with uh, assembly language, we're going to hit this one. And if you have any C part, C language in your program or C++, you're going to you want to hit these two. But since we don't have it right now, I just kind of turn them off. And at this point, if you want to name it anything else, you can name it. And if you want to save it in any other place, you can save it. At this point, you're basically done. Uh, you don't hit this part and you can just hit the finish. Uh, OK. So at this point, it's going to give you very basic stuff. It's just going to show you files. Uh, you have a couple of tabs here, and you have these uh, bottoms, which a couple of them, let's repeat it here again. Uh, you have these files that actually comes with the project. Code Barry give you a, basically a template for you. So you don't have to write down everything from zero every time that you come to this. Uh, programming, so it's actually really helpful. Uh, by any chance, if you hit this connection wrong or you have it in different things, you can actually change it at this point again. So we're just going to keep it here. And uh, just let you know if you hit this one and if you're in the middle of the uh, debugging and you hit the one and it won't work because it tries to find the actual board and it can't, so you can't, you have to actually cancel it. So uh, you, you actually wanted to keep it on simulation. And here we have the actual main file of your programming. So once you open the program at this point and you open the main file, you're going to see all these code that comes as a template, which is pretty good. And what you really need to know basically at the as a beginner is that your code has basically three parts which is to start with this part that it's actually says uh, what files is included in your programming if it's using another file and also 
if you have any variable that you actually defining or referencing. If you don't know about these that much, don't worry about it as a beginner. But once you get to it in the future, you want to know what these specifically does in your coding. But uh, just let you know, you need to have this part when you start writing a code in uh, code barrier. Otherwise, when you try to debug your code, it won't work. Uh, the next part is variables. If you have variables that you want to uh, like save the data on them or is actually uh, adding a data to your coding, uh, that's where you using uh, them here. Like in this template, they have a counter and it's stored as a word, which is basically two byte. And <clears throat> That's here for you guys to use uh, if you need it. As a beginner, most of the time you don't need it really. So if you just cut it, your code is still gonna work, but uh, I will keep it here since this code is not, not gonna work if I remove it. Uh, the very next part is your code section. That's basically where you actually start writing your code and defining what's gonna happen in your program but you need to make sure that you have this part here. So if you see here, like it's in every single part that they explain, it tells you like uh, there's a word section in front of it. So if you don't have these in front of it, it's not gonna work again. So you might wanna make sure that these are here. And also this program, it's really uh, concerned about uh, spacing. So even uh, one single spacing or semicolon is going to change everything in your code. So you might want to be careful about what you are writing now. And as you hear, see here, uh, these are all the coding that it's here. Uh, for example, it has LDS, which is basically loading uh, uh, or initializing the stack pointer at this point. That's what this, this one does. Uh, don't worry about it right now. Again, once you get to it, it's gonna explain uh, more and you're gonna understand it a lot better. But uh, just let you guys know that when you start coding, these are the like functions that basically uh, you write down here and this, every single one of them has a, a different definition that uh, most of the time every microprocessor has a manual that you can actually use and write down like the ones you actually needed from that uh, manual. So once you're done with your coding and you're sure that, hey, I'm done, or even in the middle, you want to test your code and you want to actually debug it and see if you actually write down anything wrong, uh, you come up here and you hit this debug bottom. Uh, Basically, it's just going to run it and see if it's any error or any mistake in it. It's going to tell you, and if it's not, it's going to bring you to this page. Uh, so at this point, uh, you have a couple different tabs that it's actually really helpful to debug the code and find the mistakes. Uh, the very first one, it's your source, which is basically your uh, codes, and it's going to go through it line by line, or you can actually run it. So uh, if you hit this button, it's gonna just run it. And if you have infinite loop in your code, uh, it's, gonna uh, it's gonna run it infinitely and it skips going and never stops. So if you wanna stop it, you're gonna hit this button. And if you actually wanted to see what each line of your code is actually doing, you're gonna hit the single step, uh, not this one, and you can see that is actually keep going line by line to your code and you can actually see what it's actually doing during the whole thing. Uh, the next part, it's this data part, uh, which is basically your variable that like uh, any variables that comes in or you have like uh, numbers that you wanna manually put in, you can actually select on it and you can actually change number. Uh, Usually since you're using assemble language, uh, uh, most instructors use uh, uh, hexadecimal numbers. So when you come in here, uh, make sure you double click here and or uh, right click and you go to format 
and you have to hit the hex so you're gonna see a hex value of the uh numbers here so you actually know that you're doing it right the next part is the command and it's basically just show you what what's happening let's like if you step through it it's gonna say the step uh if you run in uh if it's running it's gonna tell you it's running or if it's a stop and some sometimes if your code goes wrong it's gonna tell you that that's there's an error in it. Uh, then you have assembly. At this point, it's basically each memory location and every instruction that that memory location contains and uh, tells you where the data coming from. And the next part, it's all your registers. This one has accumulator A, B, D, X, Y, and a PC counter and stack pointer. And here is your uh, flow, uh, overflow, and it shows you if it's zero or not, uh, something like that. But uh, if you don't want to know about these, I'm going to post a video about just uh, uh, registers and explain each, each single one of them. So you kind of understand every single one of them, and it's going to help you. And so you uh, might want to subscribe and like my video if you want and you can follow me so you can actually uh, see these information also this part we're not really using it it's just there don't worry about it as much and then here is your memory which is basically it's your memory location and what data is actually contained in there and if you actually want to see where your coding is actually saving uh, because if you see here, uh, for example, here is your PC counter, which is like your memory location. And since here it doesn't follow, which every single step that you go through, you come down here, click right on it and go to address. And you're going to put C008, which is that PC counter that we had there. You hit the OK, and then you have this page here these and it's basically tells you uh, what is data that is actually stored in this memory location uh, while your coding code is running these numbers might change over time because you might overwrite it so that's kind of why it's not showing it uh, every single minute so I think that's all for this video if you like my video and if I'm actually helping you uh, you might want to uh like my videos and uh subscribe and if you have any question i'm more than happy to help please uh comment them in the comment section and i will get to those questions as soon as i can uh thanks for watching